Action mode, activate traction, left foot hard on the brake, flooring with the right, launch control, and ripping. It does the EQS pulsing thing. That's weird, yeah. And that was, we're doing way over double <laughs> the speed limit. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. Welcome to the BMW i4 M50i. This is the sportiest i4. In this video, we're gonna drive it for the first time. This is just gonna be a quick drive, our initial impressions. Of course, we're gonna get the car in for a review where we can do all of our charging testing, range testing, thermal management testing, the track test, all the stuff you guys know we love to do. That's not happening today. This is just gonna be my initial impressions. I'm gonna run you through some of the specs, some notable, notable features, take you on a tour. We only have about a half hour with the car, so let's jump in and go for our first drive. <laughs> This is a car that's loosely built on, or I say more than loosely built on, the 4 Series Grand Coupe, which we reviewed on this channel. I actually called it the best modern BMW. Under the hood, well, there's just nothing. There's just a lot of, lot of plastic. You have a little, what is this? Yeah, just some maintenance items under here, but pretty much nothing user serviceable. This doesn't even open. I'm sure you could rip this whole thing off. When we get one for review, we'll dive into it. But for now, we'll just stay into it. Um, what do you need to know? Price? Yeah, quite a bit. Don't know off the top of my head. We'll look inside the car. I'm sure it's gonna be, this one's maxed out. So this is touching 70, 80, 90 grand, something like that. We'll get you exact pricing. I know that's kind of weird. We're reviewing a car without pricing. This is all about how the car drives. So we have a roughly 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. I think it's 81 and a half kilowatt hour usable, 83 and a half gross capacity. It's like, there's just a tiny little buffer in this thing, which is pretty impressive. But BMW says they've learned after years and years with BMW i3, I've owned three of those, I love those things, uh, that basically they feel comfortable utilizing the full battery pack, which is neat. I believe you can also set your charging to 70%, 80%, 90% every day instead of full charging. Let's go take a look at the charge port. Genuinely, this is my first time looking at the car. I've again driven and reviewed the combustion version. Oh, look at this, this is so nice, these little flaps. This is wonderful, and BMW has even designed it in a way that if you're pulling up to a DC charger, you just hit the bottom and the whole thing opens. That is really, really good. Uh, in terms of AC charging, that's your you know sort of 240 volt charging. Of course, you can plug this in from a wall outlet all the way up to a DC fast charger. Uh, it has 11 kilowatt onboard charging, which is pretty stout. I want to say that's 40 to 48 amps, somewhere around there. And then DC charging is pretty good too, 200 kilowatt peak. Uh, and I believe we have a curve that I can put a link to in the description of this video that BMW has provided us. So that's really cool. The thing that I love about BMW and BMW's EVs and everything is they're totally transparent. They tell you every little nook and cranny. They even give us their ideal charging curves with no other automaker does. I really love the attention to detail here, at least from the engineering perspective. By the way, it can do 195 kilowatt regen in the all-wheel drive version, which is the M50 that we're driving here. 580 horsepower, 560 horsepower, tons of power. We'll get, again, specs. This is a very last minute thing, but over 500 horsepower. They have a rear wheel drive version of this car as well. Oh, this one's got the Harman Kardon subwoofer in the back here. Uh, and the seats fold down. Really, Jordan, don't you agree? No difference in cargo over the normal one. Nope. That's awesome. You can see the integrated struts here. This little partition can come out. Seats can fold flat. All very nicely packaged for being an electric car. I will say it does look like it sits a little high and that's just because the battery packs in the floor. So it's got quite a high suspension thing. I think this thing would look great just lowered about two inches. I really think it actually does need that much. Uh, but then your battery's on the ground. So don't, you know, I'm not saying you should modify your car. Now this particular spec here in the sort of stealth port -a mal blue looks amazing, especially with these rear fender flares. You can see this really pronounced on this particular specification. This has all the M performance accessories on it with the big wheels for give some of the noise, the laser headlights. And then I really love this sort of stick on design treatment here in the back. I think that makes the car look so much more muscular and I would totally do that if I had one of these things. I think that makes all the difference in the world. But overall, this one looks really great. Blacked out with the sort of dark red interior or chestnut interior, some carbon bits on this one as well. Really nicely optioned car. In terms of back seat room, if you guys take a look in the back, I will try this out here. Let me just move this backpack. Again, we only have a very short time with it. Wow, I actually can fit. My head is just brushing the ceiling here, but not bad considering this sloping roof line. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a four-door car that you could really use as a four-door car. I would say if you're 
Yeah, I'm six foot one. If you're six foot, you're fine. Six foot one, brushing your head here. Of course, everyone's taller in their legs in some places. Great leg room. USB-C ports, climate control here in the back, which is great. Um, not seeing any heated seat controls, but that might be an option. Let's jump to the front of the car and we'll hop in. Again, this one's the M50i, so you'll see M badges everywhere. Very similar to like an M Sport. This isn't a full M model seat. Let's see if it goes nice and low. Oh yes, lovely. Thing BMW always gets right is cabin positioning. So when I get set in a car, yeah, everything is exactly where I expect it to be. And maybe that's just because I've been a BMW fan my whole life, but overall, I mean, I just love the placement. It's accurate, it's where it should be and everything just feels like the combustion one except for this giant screen. So what do you say we get some GoPros in this thing? Jordan's gonna join me and we'll go for our first drive. In the i4 M50i, now this is the max one. We are not starting off with the 40 rear wheel drive. No. Uh, what's the power of the rear wheel drive, by the way? Uh, 335. And then this one is 536. Yeah, big and, difference. But 580 pound feet of torque. Yeah, That's like spicy numbers here. I mean, I think the the EV world's gotten a little bit swayed from the numbers. This is like, this is still a relatively small-ish car. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're in a seven series and it's got 530 horsepower. Yeah, that's insane. That's insane. That's more than the top spec of the combustion one yeah. by like a hundred and something horsepower. So I'm expecting this thing to rip. I love all the blue accents everywhere down here. We're going to go into drive. We're in comfort mode because a BMW still needs to be quite comfortable. Now, you and I have driven at pretty much every modern BMW now together. Yeah. And uh, we're very lucky. We get to review cars, of course, for a living, which is great. But what's your opinion so far of just the car's shape and things like this? Uh, looks great, actually. I think this is a better implementation of the Kidney than the iX, although both are controversial because who needs a grill if you're an electric car? First of all, this thing feels, just like initial impression, extremely solid. And it's so quiet. So quiet. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, well, this is the brand new iDrive system, so we haven't quite used it yet. Vehicle apps, maybe? Setting, oh wait, system settings. Oh, drive settings, I just oh, saw Oh, drive it. settings? Where, Where is it? Go? There we go. Driver assistance, yes, this one. Uh, energy recovery ID, high. Oh, in D, high. That's what we want. Right, and then I can also move it to the left. Ah, look at this. I, I don't know, we'll have to include some B-roll here. When you're in drive, instead of moving the shifter to the left for like a sport mode, you can actually move it to the left in B mode, and now you have, yeah, one pedal driving. So let's try that creeping Ooh. function. So I'm, I'm tipping in now. I'm lifting off. Yeah, so it's great on the acceleration, not so good on the braking. You feel it kind of coast mm -hmm. and then grab friction brakes. So here we are, blending. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it that's not very good one pedal calibration at low speed. Yeah, It like does everything it can with motor and then it's like, oh, I need to blend friction brakes. We have an IX here to the right of us, which is awesome. Looks better in person. The IX <laughs> looks better in person. We're also gonna have a drive on this vehicle here pretty soon, but let's try some power. Whoa, Ooh, you back. spicy yeah. meatball right here. That's impressive. And then, you know, here, what's our state of charge? We're at 88%. I love that it gives us a percentage of charge right here. Can we just ask BMW to stop making these silly displays look so crazy? Because <laughs> <laughs> it really does look a little bit extra on this. I mean, the displays are gorgeous. Just give me some nice, round, mm -hmm. classical dials, you know? That does match what they've been doing. But yeah, it yeah it, it's nothing doing, different for their electric. Doesn't their mean they're combustion. doing it right. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but I love that the percentage and miles are both in corners of the display. I don't know why they're not next to each other, but you know. I also love how there's different levels of regen and it shows like you're at one, two, or three as I'm lifting off. Like there's more to give basically. That's 88% and that's a lot of regen. Wow, yeah. 195 kilowatt peak regen here. And yeah, it feels extremely solid. So in terms of comfort cruising, yeah, definitely moving it to B enables one pedal driving. In D mode, it has creep. Mm -hmm. And I love that it's just a knock of this toggle right here. Oh, and we have an ambulance coming through. I don't know how they're gonna be able to get through. Yeah, we need to make some room here. Nice freight liner box. Don't they have the little light things that they can adjust? I don't know. I guess not. Here they go. Ripping, ripping. So 
What else do we have down here? We have our drive modes, Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport. We have traction control. I love that BMW lets you go full off, by mm -hmm. the way. There's a video that BMW Netherlands did where they were drifting this car. So that's one of the few EVs that it's like, you know, it retains the BMW ethos of the driver can have full control over the car if yep. they want it. Still a driver's car. I also love that we're, I'm not touching the brake right now because we have it in B mode. Yep. I didn't notice that when we first got in, but back to D to the left, just like you're putting the, the normal ZF eight speed mm -hmm. into sport mode. That's wonderful. But they've removed a whole bunch of buttons here. I'm not sure. I They removed all the programmable eight like button. Yeah. Things. So the eight programmable buttons are gone across. You have to go into the screen to use climate control, which I look at the end of the day, it's fine. You'll get used to it, but I don't know why they wouldn't just keep the same dash from the four series grand coupe because I thought that was a wonderful dash. Yeah. They wanted to be different. This thing feels unbelievably comfortable. I believe it has rear air suspension, definitely adaptive damper. Mm -hmm. But look at this. Yeah, this is really comfy. And these roads are not good. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but they are bumpy, full of little potholes. And Yeah. This is great. <laughs> I mean, it's surprisingly much better than I was expecting in terms of a comfort perspective. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is get kind of out of the traffic, turn on a Karen Ave. <laughs> let's put it in sport mode really quick so there's sport individual sport boost and sport in sport boost you get 10 seconds at max power mm -hmm. and so that's where you get the 536 horsepower yeah it's i don't i think they rate the car still at max boost charging really quick let's see charging mode yeah charging target you can set it in five percent increments that's really nice from Wow, 20%. Down to 20, yeah. <laughs> all the way up to 100 in 5% increments. 48 amp onboard charger. BMW's getting it. And fan loudness, this is wonderful. If you want, if you don't want the fans to be loud, you can restrict the noise level. And then it'll charge just a little slower. It's, yeah, that's crazy. The charging time may be increased. Wow, I've never seen that type of setting before. Yeah, and you can have it on automatic, so it depends on the time of day. I yeah, wonder, so I guess like at yeah. night? I don't know. This is... That's a wild setting. We have to try that. They thought about everything. Yeah. In what world would it be like, yeah, we're just going to like charge slower and so you don't overheat the car. So now we're in sport boost. This should be full power. Ready? Yep. Whoa. Okay. That sound doesn't actually bother me. That is the least worst sound. Yeah. That I've heard in any... The Hans Zimmer. And as you like kept laying into it like the bass started accompanying it too. So many of these cars do really tinny, cheap feeling sound and this is like, oh you have the Harman Kardon in the sub? We'll pump that in too. That felt really this good. Great. <laughs> this it feels I mean we're just spinning tires. <laughs> <laughs> it's just at low speed just Rawr! Wow. Okay now we're kind of going down into the area where we need to go where we can have some fun with this thing. But I think this the steering at low speed feels really good compared to the combustion cars. Something I've complained about modern BMWs a lot are sort of this awkward, rubbery steering feel. And I haven't been a huge fan of the steering wheels in some models, but this is a nice wheel that they're using here for sure. This is really nice. We have some pretty big undulations here. Even in sport mode, it's pretty soft, I have yeah. to say. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go down this way here. We just want to get to the middle of nowhere. Ripping it. Ready? Whoa! Whoa! That's crazy. This thing rips! It does the BMW thing, which is encouraging you to drive faster. It feels quite heavy, though, and the steering is quite vague. So, yeah, I mean, that's... I wouldn't say... And we're not really, like, hustling, hustling. We're just so they didn't fix the steering, but it's better. So here's what I don't like. It doesn't give you power out of corners, at least with DSC on. If I back it down one to traction, DTC mode, activate traction, yes. Now, I hope when I come out of a corner, because it was just, I was floored and it was like feeding in, feeding in power. But if I go here, nail it. Yeah, see, and then the wheel is straight and then it gives you power. So it like limits power by wheel turn. We've noticed this in some of their xDrive systems too. When I reviewed the BMW 540i, was it? Yeah. And uh, that, that would not give you power unless the wheel was straight too, <laughs> which is a, a, an odd decision, I would say. So I know we're just kind of in a neighborhood, but let's see if we can turn, floor it. No, there it goes. <laughs> it was struggling for grip that whole corner. Yeah, so with DSC off, it doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. So that's good. I'm okay. As long as there's an override. As long as you can turn it off, yeah. Wow, that guy's got some crazy cars. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, okay, I4, really good. Should we talk driver assistance stuff really quick? It's the exact same as the other BMWs that we know and love. So, great competent lane centering, eye tracking for low speed. It has um, the uh, capacitive wheel. Yep. Everything about they the interior is really great. well. Yeah, I mean, really, at the end of the day, this first drive is really a very quick taste. It's, you know, is the car feel solid? Yes. It's just spinning tires. That is so interesting, the sound. That's full brakes, by the way. Oh. Brake by wire, but not great braking performance. There's just no grip. Yeah. Let's try again. Hmm. It, I, the car's just heavy. Yeah. <laughs> the tires are cold. It's, yeah, 55 degrees out. So that, that's just a tire limitation. The brake pedal itself, fully brake by wire, so you don't feel any ABS through the pedal. Uh, and they don't hide that. You can hear it clicking away. But... Um, yeah, this is a competent car. And I guess what I was expecting was it to feel like a combustion car that was adapted to an EV. So okay. like it would have these weird drivetrain anomalies or like it wouldn't feel solid. This feels like it's carved of one whole piece. There's not a creak, a rattle, the noise isolation is amazing. The comfort, the seats are great. Mm -hmm. Everything about the interior is is absolutely fantastic. I have no issues with it. I actually even like the steering wheel in this car. I like the lightness of the wheel at low speed, which some BMWs are too heavy even in the comfort mode. We noticed that with the X5 plug-in yeah. hybrid. And yeah, I kind of wish maybe this car just doesn't have heated seats or maybe you got to go into this. Yeah, see, I, I just want to, they need yeah. to update the software just to put the heated seats on. There's Tesla's all this wasted this space down here. But there's so much the system can do. It's got a built-in uh, dash cam mm -hmm. that can then save files to a USB. It can automatically roll down your window when you get to your Starbucks drive-through because you've programmed <laughs> it to do that. I mean, it's got all the BMW stuff that we know and love. So coming through here, big power. Look at that, right on the edge. We were just dancing it around through there. Yeah, that's so crazy. This thing's really quite agile. For being with how heavy it is, yep. And it, it the, here's the thing that I love. Older BMWs, like I owned an F80 M3, which I didn't really quite like, but the older M cars encourage you to drive a little bit like a Hoonigan. <laughs> this does too. Yeah. This is like, yeah, we can cruise, cruise, and then just like all the power, rip it. I don't like the car with traction control on though because it limits power based on wheel input. Um, DSC off though, it's still doing some sort of traction control. We're not just like roasting tires because yeah. they need to protect axles when it goes from low mu to high mu so you don't just like rip your axle out, out of the thing. But overall, I have to say, let's just kind of give our final impressions here. Um, what do you think about the car? What do you think about the specs? Is, are there Has the pricing been announced for it? It has, I imagine, right? Uh, that I don't know. Okay, well, we're gonna do a full launch here while you're looking that up. So I would say, <laughs> I'll give my impressions at least really good power like really really good power it does it in a very bmw way which is a little bit immediate a little bit frantic when you're dsc off which is what you want because it's kind of just struggling for grip the whole way um we should mention range too do we know what that is um it's got to be you. mid 200 miles something the like price that. starts at fifty-five thousand and a bit change for the rear wheel drive yeah the m50 is 70 is 70 as starting so yeah that's of kind of what i figured spec it further. so now i'm going to go traction mode activate traction left foot hard on the brake flooring with the right launch control and ripping it does the eqs pulsing thing that's weird yeah and that was we're doing way over the <laughs> speed limit. <laughs> yeah the launch is amazing and it's got full launch control yep and i like the noise in this you're right it's cool. So it's a, it brings in different frequencies the faster you're going. So it's almost tricking your brain to think you're switching gears, but you're not. It's a little Taycan-y. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Taycan, I think, has worse sound than this car, in my opinion. Yeah, this, other than the GTS, I really liked too, but this sound may be my favorite electric sound so far. Mm, I have to agree, and I would still turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so the M50 has up to 270 miles of range. Depending on wheels, though. Yeah. Yeah, so two, what was it, 270 max? Yep. But the rear wheel drive will do over 300. 301. Yeah, just, a, just over <laughs> Over 300, 300 miles. That's for in, marketing. That's in the EPA cycle. Of course, mm -hmm. we'll do our own uh, range testing on this car. Yeah, I'm excited to test it. Yeah, but wow, thanks to BMW for hooking us up with this. Yeah, fantastic. And I know it's a very short experience. We're going to do our full in-depth reviews that you guys hopefully know and appreciate because we do put a lot of effort into our EV testing. But uh, overall... 
I think this is, yeah, this is way more impressive than I expected, and it's just extremely stout. Yep. I think I'm going the wrong way. Oh, yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the review's not quite over. Can it drive like a BMW in traffic? Watch this. No turn signal. Yes, it can. <laughs> it passes the BMW test. Should we do it again? No turn signal. Ah, wonderful. Yeah, if you had used a turn signal, someone would think this it is would stolen. Yeah, it would just explode. <laughs> wow. And there you have it. The BMW i4 M50i, our first experience cruising around a city. Nothing fancy, no back roads. We're going to do a whole bunch with these cars, I think. Yeah. But first impressions, big fan. Big fan. Big fan. Wait, uh, this might be the fi my favorite BMW I've driven in recent times. We just had the new M240i, which was a real fun car, but not quite spicy enough, I would say. Yep. Um, this this drives better than that, I think. Yeah. And it's soft and compliant and does the little wafty thing when you put it in comfort mode really well. All right, big power again. Man, it encourages you to just nail it all the time. This is great. <laughs> it really is. They've and we're you know we're leaving out a whole bunch of stuff just because it's a quick drive. But what this car also will do? Can we go? Can we not? We can. Um, this car just uh, did they run out of charge in this one? No, uh, they're, <laughs> they're lost. They're talking. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just go past them here. Um, yeah, the car has so much like uh, good nerdiness, like route planning. It will do apparently really good station route planning for road trips, and then precondition on the way to DC fast chargers. Like they just they went in and did it properly this time around. Yeah, we need to road trip one of these for sure. We do need to road trip one of these. So BMW, if you're watching, we need a car as soon as possible to do all the nerdy testing with. But I'm really impressed here with the M50i. Way way impressed. Should we drive the iX next? Let's do it. All right. See you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.